Um, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the lecture organized by the Extramural Lectures team and IIT for Society. Um, I just have a couple of announcements uh, to make before we talk about the lecture. So um, this series of lectures is actually organized as a platform for the Institute community to interact with the speaker and pursue the discourse of matters relating to society. The lectures are organized with a value system dominated by open-mindedness, our intellectual settings, and the spirit of learning. Uh, we hope everyone follows this spirit and engages in a meaningful exchange with the speaker. At the same time, we do not endorse any of the personal views expressed by the speaker. And uh, dissenting views are promoted, and we will give an opportunity for them to be presented in this forum. And uh, with specific regard to the Q&A session that will happen after the um, talk today, um, we will be entertaining questions regarding the topic of today's lecture first. And uh, personal questions uh, for the speaker will be taken after these questions. Uh, we will give time for these, but we will give preference for questions related to the topic of today's talk. Um, so uh, the first thing that I want to say today is we are doing this in conjunction with IIT for Society, uh, which is a student body started last semester um, that sensitizes the students about various social and political issues while encouraging them to think critically. In the past semester, um, they have taken up issues that look into problems within and outside our campus. And uh, they recently undertook a campaign against racism and showed solidarity with the victims from the Northeast who are subjected to racial hatred elsewhere. The discussion on Commonwealth heads of governments um, meet and campaign is association with the Dark is Beautiful campaign, uh, where other, activi uh, other activities that were held by IIT Society over the last few months. Um, the question of caste system, racism, forms of oppression, and wider political dimension are taken um, for careful study under this forum. So the, the, uh, the members of IIT for Society tell me we'll be circulating a sheet. Um, so anyone who's interested in being a part of IIT for Society, please um, supply your contact details on that sheet. And um, now let's get to the lecture today. So um, the topic of today's lecture is related to human rights, which are central to the maintenance of communal harmony. The relations between various communities and religious groups have been tampered with. And in the past decades, we've witnessed many riots as a result of religious prejudices and political interests. The communal violence is not only a case of human rights violation, but also propagates hatred among the common public. The victims of these confrontations can only claim justice through campaigns advocating human rights. This issue will be discussed at large with references to instances from the recent past in today's lecture. Our speaker today is Ms. Tista Setilwad, a civil rights activist and journalist. She is the Secretary for Citizens for Justice and Peace, uh, which is an organization formed for fighting for justice for the victims of communal violence. She was awarded the Padma Shri in 2007 for her contributions towards public affairs in Maharashtra. One of the vocal advocates for communal harmony, she is also the publisher of the magazine Communalism Combat. So without further ado, we'd like to invite our speaker. Um, first, we'd like to invite a um, faculty member from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences to present a memento to our speaker, um, Mr. Milind Brahme. And I think I've spoken enough, so I'll hand over the stage to Ms. Tista Setilwad. I'd just like to personally thank the students of the IIT Madras Chennai and the faculty for having me here. And uh, this, has, as happens, has to be my third or fourth visit to Chennai in the last three or four months. And I hope I get to come here more often. I, expanding on the uh, subject that was suggested to me, which is human rights and communalism, I thought I would uh, focus a bit more and uh, treat it as fighting communal forces that divide South Asia and India and take you through a directory of the kind of work we've been trying to do and the kind of analysis and conclusions we've arrived at over the last 23, 24 years. Hate Hurts, Harmony Works has been our credo and Sabrang, which means all colors, was started by us. When I say us, I mean Javed Anand, my husband colleague, myself and a handful of very committed colleagues <clears throat> in 1993 to provide information on, analyze and expose the machinations of communal politics in India on the subcontinent and abroad, and to publicize the attempts of secular individuals, groups, and organizations engaged in fighting them. 
We stand for equal respect to all religions, but are opposed to the cynical manipulation of faith in the pursuit of power. Therefore, we are opposed to both majority and minority communalism. We believe very critically that the riot in the mind festers for long before it spills onto the streets and can often be prevented by responsible information, debate, and dialogue. We've been publishing a monthly communalism combat, a monthly in an attractive format for the, since August 1993. We also have a website, which I invite you to look at, Sabrang. And since 2002, we've also been engaged in the legal rights for the survivors of the 2002 carnage in Gujarat. Apart from that, we also work in the area of education, social studies, and history teaching, which is our coach uh, educational program. One of the unique aspects about communalism as we've come to understand it is the cynical and scary ability of the spread of this pernicious ideology to subsume all our identities and thought processes into an extremely divisive us versus them. The us and them are interchangeables depending on which side of the communal divide we view things from and can in fact even shift and change as we have often seen happen. Our region, not just India, has, has had brute manifestations of communalisms of different hues, and it has been my, our personal pursuit and our organizational pursuit to understand and expose each one of these. No one faith has exclusive claim or right to become perver perverted through the misuse of religious symbols and faith it itself in the pursuit of power. We are seeing today in the overtly crude measures to convert our nation founded on the ideals of Article 14 to 30 of the Constitution that are wedded to equality and non-discrimination to a Hindu majoritarian state, a prospect that has frightening and exclusivist implications. We saw it in the very creation of Pakistan, built on a movement that asserted that Muslims could not live in the same nation as others stroke Hindus, and saw that very assertion receive a setback when East Pakistan broke away on the issue of linguistic domination and hegemony, and Bangladesh was formed <coughs> in 1971. Sri Lanka, an emerald isle till the bitter seeds of communalism was sown way back in the official language bill of 1956 that left Tamil out of the official language of the country, reaped the harvest of bitter alienation and violence that has left hundreds of thousands dead. The absence of linguistic, ethnic, and religious parity and egalitarian within the Sri Lankan legal framework and state sowed the seeds of this bitter isolation. On my first visit to Sri Lanka in 1997, I carried with me a secular, humane vision of Buddhism, banished as it has been from the land of its birth. The fortnight-long stay in several cities in Sri Lanka, the machinations of the Buddhist Sangha on Lankan politics, Buddhist monks have a say in the functioning of the Sri Lankan cabinet, the divisive policies of ensuring that Sinhala Buddhist-speaking children and Tamil Hindu-speaking ones attend separate schools and are taught different histories, it exploded the myth of Buddhism ever and always being a peaceful faith. History is the playing field for all communalist ideologies and ideologues. Historians and ordinary citizens alike from every community in Sri Lanka, India and Pakistan today, Myanmar with a birthing democratic experiment faces its first real challenge on how it is presently dealing with the minority Rohingyas. No faith remains peaceful as history has shown or nonviolence once it is linked to state power and control. State and religion are a pernicious mix something that the founding fathers and mothers of our republic realized when they made a sound, considered, pragmatic, and wise choice to ensure that India remains a secular democratic republic, despite over 500,000 persons massacred over the divisions and hatreds caused by the vivisection in 1946-47. A little bit of history would not be amiss here to enable us to look back at this period that always will cause us pain, but needs to be visited with rationality and maturity. What were the factors that resulted in partition? Our national movement against colonial rule over 150 years old was inclusive, representing different sections of our peoples and spanned a variety of regions affected by the repressive policies of the British, squeezing us of the last cent and life, in ignoring the horrors of poverty and the famine, filling coffers of their governments while bleeding us dry. Recent works by Madhushri and others on the complete duplicity of the British when it came to the famine, not just the Bengal famine, but even other famines, have shown how many of these documents were systematically suppressed. The first war of independence against the British in 1857, first misrepresented as a mutiny, was including of several king kingdoms and a varied set of interests, different religionists who came together to throw off colonial yoke. 
rebel soldiers established the vast Mughal Empire as the emperor on 11-5-1857 in Delhi. V.D. Savarkar, none less than Vikram Savarkar, writing about this historical moment in his book titled National War of Independence, described the 1847 war and its culmination with the crowning of Bahadur Shah Zafar on Delhi's throne as the five glorious days of Indian history. The British launched a severe counter-offensive on the attempts to drive them out. A veritable siege of Delhi was launched and by September 1857, rebellion was crushed. Hundreds of thousands from the old city killed and several prominent Muslim families placed under house arrest. In the early 1900s, the British tried to ensure continued rule through crass attempts to divide Bengal. Hindus and Muslims split, spilt out onto the streets. Rabindranath Tagore wrote his famous song that actually was sung on the streets of Bengal and partition of Bengal was averted. Kolkata and Dhaka both had those songs ringing in the streets. Why was the partition of Bengal abandoned? What then made the final vivisection possible barely three and a half decades later? These are questions that we need to ask if we want to really probe the communal politics of our time. What turn did politics take to ensure this? If the Muslim League demanded a Pakistan as a nation separately for Muslims, a fact that is drilled into us by our history texts, why are we not so knowledgeable on the contemporary demands made by the Hindu Mahasabha and the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh for a Hindu Rashtra? In 1923, the very same V.D. Savarkar, who had decades earlier spoken about composite nationhood, espoused the theory of Hindutva. According to this thesis, all Hindus were tied together by bonds of common fatherland, ties of blood, common civilization, common heroes, etc. The membership of the fatherland depended on accepting the land as both the fatherland and the holy land. It is also the basis of Pitra Bhumi, fatherland and Punya Bhumi, holy land, concept of nationhood propounded by Gulwalkar in V and our nationhood this time. This deliberately excluded Jews, Christians, Muslims, and even castes and working classes who are not permitted by the scourge of caste to enter temples, eat the same food or even breathe the same air. The scourge and indignity of manual scavenging, carrying human excreta on heads prevails even today, seriously challenging India and Indians' modernity and compassion. For the proponents of a Muslim state of Pakistan or an imagined Hindu state, the man who threatened this most was our own very own apostle of intra-community faith and harmony, a man quirky, eccentric, who lived by his ideals and whose death was caused by the bullets of hatred, Gandhi. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, a wily lawyer turned politician from Purbandar, Gujarat. Struck by a film I once saw, a black and white film of the 60s, that shows Gandhi arriving back suited and booted from a successful struggle in South Africa, he listens to the wise counsel of Gokhale, who advises him not to make any decisions, not to propound any policies, not to give any slogans, but first to travel the length and breadth of this country, listen to the people before launching his struggle. Gandhi does just that, listening, writing, evolving an understanding of this vast land, its peoples, its diversities, its pluralisms and their binding sense of belonging. For him, as he writes in Hind Swaraj, that shared life, social and economic concerns, neighborhoods, regions, different languages and cultures constitute a composite nationhood. More explicitly, he says in the early 1940s, to pernicious communal propaganda, that for him, his Rajya, and his Ram Rajya, he said, this is my Ram Rajya, and I quote, Ram Rajya is not a rule of Hindus. Ram Rajya for me is the same as Khuda ki Basti or the kingdom of God on earth. No wonder then that he died a violent death. An apostle for peace and, uh, and harmony, an army who drew inspiration and ethics from the Gita, Quran, and Bible, who if he faltered ethically at all in my view, it was on the issue of withdrawing from the temple entry movement simply to keep his upper caste Hindu supporters and others under a united flock, but whose assassination was attempted five times before the one that brought us grief and loss on 30th of January 1948. Have any of us who read our history texts ever wondered at the prevalent public discourse, ever asked ourselves, why are we so reticent, why are we so evasive or silent on the forces that killed Mahatma Gandhi? I dare to ask this question because it was, after all, the first ever act of violent terror in independent India. Is it the fact that this action was the handiwork carefully planned and plotted by Hindu majoritarian exclusivist forces that makes us edgy and so uncomfortable? 
Dealing with communalism, facing the communal de demon, much like racist bias or gender-driven prejudices, is worrisome because it always involves scratching the surface of our own skins and asking some deeply uncomfortable questions. If you browse through the web website of Sabrang, you'll see that our commitment to expose and fight communalism of all use is evident for you to see. Way back in 1994, six months into our birth, we demanded a gender-just civil code for girls and women of this country. Exposing the sectarian and hegemonical notion of a uniform civil code that was being argued without addressing any realities, we pointed out that provisions for inheritance, marriage and divorce that are women-centric require an understanding of things as they stand. The Special Marriages Act, enacted to enable persons like me to marry without religious ritual, has been privileged for the partner who is Hindu. A Hindu partner retains his or her right to inherit as per Hindu law, a right which is denied a partner from a religious minority. Financial, financial privileges given to a Hindu under an outdated provision of the Income Tax Act, Hindu Undivided Family, is not available to any other community in this country. So labels like appeasement, quote unquote, coming as they always do from brazenly majoritarian communal forces, need to be deconstructed by us rationally and carefully. We analyze the Islamization of the Kashmiri movement in the valley and outrightly condemn the forced expulsion of Kashmiri pundits. In November 1998, before anyone in India or, the, or South Asia had written about the dangerous growth of the Taliban in Afghanistan or its impact on Afghan women, our cover story, Hell on Earth, created a sensation a full two and a quarter years before the Bamiyan Buddhas were destroyed in full public view, March 2001. Welcome to Hindu Rashtra was one of my many cover stories on dangerous tendencies growing in the western Indian state of Gujarat long before 27 to 2002 when the tragic train burnings took place at Godhra and the state conspired to allow brute reprisal killings in 14 districts. Violence continued unchecked for three and a half months after KPS Guild was brought in in early May, the wonders of electoral democracy apart, the concerns of doctor history in textbooks have been our concern. Looking back at communal politics and electoral democracy, some facts I'd like to place before the, this thinking audience. In 1984, when 3,006 were massacred on the streets of India's capital, th between 31st, 31st, 31st night, 1st November and 3rd November 1984, we had our first election after that in December of that year. At that time, we had no television. At that time, we had no internet. At that time, we didn't have the kind of extensive electronic video documentation that Gujarat had seen. But I recall the small black book brought out by PUCL and PUDR. I still have a copy. Who are the guilty? In that book, four persons were named, clearly named, as the perpetrators who were inciting the mobs. HKL Bhagat, Kamal Nath, Jagdish Taitler and Sajjan Kumar. They are still evading uh, justice, but there are, are still attempts being made to uh, bring them to book. Why I bring up these names is because in the first election that took place in 1984, the national election following the assassination, tickets were given to all these four leaders to contest from New Delhi. Not only were tickets given to contest, but I'm ashamed to say, because I think this is what we need to reflect upon, they won with unprecedented 60% majorities. So the question is not whether in 2002, 2007, and 2012, if Modi wins in elections in Gujarat, what does that mean? The question is, if political parties continue to field those persons accused of perpetrated mass crimes, what does it do to the ethics of electoral democracy? And is democracy for us simply the mechanics of holding elections? Or is it about the deepening of democracy and our electoral institutions, our justice delivery institutions, our police force, our educational institutions? Madhukar Sarpodar, in my constituency where I live in Western, Northwest Bombay, was another example after 92-93, given a parliamentary seat, romping to victory, Shiv Sena candidate. He had also led a mob in Kherwadi on behalf of the Shiv Sena. So this malaise is not... <coughs> something that only one or the other party indulges in, but it is a serious challenge to Indian democracy, to our electoral system, and the ethics that we choose to propagate. It would be frightening for me to see the rest of Indian cities divided like Ahmedabad and Varodhra are, 
or have our classrooms monocultured, monocultured and monocolored as they exist in that state. Gandhi born at Porbandar would have died a thousand deaths at the state of affairs here. History and historical manipulation is the core strategy of communalist ideologies of all hues. If Swami Vivekanand is sought to be appropriated today by the likes of the violent and threatening, Akbar, one of our greatest rulers, along with Ashoka from our past, who tried to practice pluralism during his rule, is ignored and scorned by the Muslim communal organizations. For us, the jamaat e islami can never be progressive unless they shed their core belief in Maududism that was the inspiration for Pakistan. These are the critical and ethical issues if we are dealing with communalism and seeking to deconstruct it. Are we at all aware that the first ever Indian, at least, and possibly world, all-girls school came up in Bhirevada, Pune, a tiny part of Pune, and that this school came with great difficulty when Savitri Bai Phule and Jyoti Bai Phule established it. Today it is the seat of a bank, and there's a huge movement afoot trying to recapture that space as a, as a, as a symbol of resistance. When Savitri Bai and Jyoti Bai tried to set up this school, and it started with seven girls, all from different castes and communities, one Chamar, one Mahar, one Brahmin, one Muslim, one Christian, they faced complete ostracism from their societies. They were thrown out of their caste. They persisted, and the person to give them refuge was Usman Sheikh from Pune, and the teacher to join Savitri Bai Phule in that school was Fatima Sheikh from Pune. But unfortunately, it is not this story or this narrative that we see in our social studies and history texts, because it's a narrative that is complex, it's a narrative that is revealing, it's a narrative that is also reflective of the diversity and negotiation that we've had in our past, and not so very distant past. It's much easier to forget about a Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, a Badshah Khan, a Frontier Gandhi, who, who was also made to vanish from Maharashtra's textbooks when majoritarian communal forces came to power. He was a threat because he actually wept when India was partitioned and he told the Congress that you are throwing me to the wolves. He was one of the persons, I don't know how many know about the Kudai Khidmatgar movement, that actually abandoned arms when they were completely swayed by Gandhi's Satyagraha movement. So these are aspects of our history that we tend to forget deliberately. That Shivaji had close aides in his cabinet, including his finance minister, who was a Muslim, close conf confidants from the Muslim community, that Aurangzeb Cruel, who was responsible for the murder of uh, Dara Shikho and the Jazia attacks, also at the same time gave money and grants to some other temples, including the Mathura and Kashi temple. History is complex. History is written with different motives. Just as rulers in present times display different impulses, political, social, opportunistic, and economic, so does leaders of the past. To brush them with this brush or the other, particularly the communal brush, remains a very dangerous project for communalist historians. <coughs> of the recent past, we are seeing and this is where I come to the more current issue, we are seeing a very frightening growth of a kind of proto-fascist dialogue where you have aggressive neoliberal policies in the name of development sitting with a majoritarian, idea, a majoritarian agenda. The question is, the agenda that is being portrayed all over the country is very different from the agenda that is being pushed in the very electorally critical state of Uttar Pradesh. I invite you to look at the complete mobilizations that are going on in Uttar Pradesh, which are not quote-unquote development at all, but are rank majoritarian communal. So these are some of the very severe challenges we face today. Uh, Nehru, the much reviled first prime minister of our country, said that if fascism ever came to India, it would come in the garb of majority communalism, while he recognized the dangers of both majority and minority communalism. The question we need to ask ourselves that are we at that juncture where we need to fear the conjunction of both majoritarian communal forces and a very aggressive neoliberal agenda which benefits only one notion and kind of development which often means jobless growth. So I'd like to end by asking these four questions. Does communalism have only one color? Of course not. Is communalism or fanaticism or supremacist ideology the monopoly of either the majority or the minority? Certainly not. If public discourse in India is frighteningly dominated by a corporatized media that is brazenly promoting the Hindutva right, sections of the minority are being induced to the inroads of a Saudi Arabian-driven Wahhabism to turn to more rigid versions of Islam. 
Is one form of fanaticism more dangerous than the other? Both clearly feed into each other and have been historically observed to be two sides of the same coin. One thing, however, if we are honest with ourselves, needs to be clear. We among the minority need to chew over and humbly register and remember. Minority communalism breeds inwardness and can also foster a riot. The insidious spread of majoritarian communalism, be it in Islam in Pakistan, Sinhala Buddhism in Sri Lanka, or Hindutva in India, actually starts influencing the functioning of the state apparatus. We have seen institutionalized bias and prejudice at work within our state apparatus. That is when we see manifestations of institutionalized prejudice, manifestations that deny equality of citizenship and opportunity and thwart justice, the essence of our preamble and our constitution. And therefore, I think, as we reflect at this very critical juncture, as many other junctures in India have been, we need to recall maybe these words of Martin Luther King, which say that history will have to record that the greatest tragedy of this period of social transition was not the strident clamor of the bad people, but the appalling silence of the good people. Thank you. Um, we'll take questions now. Uh, please ask for the mic and please stand up when you ask so that you're audible. I need to join down. Yeah. Yeah. Please, please. मैडम मैं आपसे ये पूछना चाहता हूँ कि आपने कम्युनिज्म कंबैट जो मैगजीन स्टार्ट की है तो 1999 में आपने 1993 स्टार्ट 1993 में की है 1999 में आपने कुछ पार्टी से पैसा लेके उस संघ परिवार के खिलाफ एडवरटाइजमेंट पब्लिश किए फिर कुछ एनजीओ जो फॉरेन फंड हैं वो उन्हीं एडवरटाइजमेंट को फ्री में इंडोर्स करते हैं तो क्या आपको नहीं लगता या मेरा या हो सकता है सबका मानना हो कि आप किसी एक स्पेसिफिक पार्टी के लिए प्रोपेगेंडा फैला रही हैं दूसरा क्वेश्चन एक मिनट भाई ये पूछना जो पूछना है दूसरा मैं आपको एक छोटी सी स्टोरी बताना चाहता हूं कि हमारे गांव में जैसे सो कॉल्ड एक माइनॉरिटी एक मेजोरिटी है अब माइनॉरिटी का बच्चा मेजोरिटी के खेत में ले जाके भैंस घुसा देता है ठीक है मेजोरिटी का उसको थप्पड़ मार देता है एक सिंपल सी बात है लेकिन उसके बाद क्या होता है कि वो हाय तो बा हाय तो बा स्टार्ट कर देता है कि मैं माइनॉरिटी हूँ इसलिए मेरे को मार दिया मैं माइनॉरिटी हूँ इसको तो आप ये हाय तो बा कब बंद करेंगी ये बताइए आप मेरे दो क्वेश्चन है कि एक तो आप हाय तो बा कब बंद करेंगी और आप एक किस पार्टी के लिए काम करती हूँ वो बता मैं छह सात प्रश्न इकट्ठा करके फिर जवाब नहीं नहीं मैं छह सात सवाल इकट्ठा करके फिर जवाब दू मैं जवाब जरूर दूंगी आप भी थोड़ा सा सभ्यता मानिए हेलो मैम यू सेड समथिंग अबाउट न्यू लिबरल पॉलिसीज एंड कम्युनलिज्म आई डोंट नो हाउ आर यू कनेक्टिंग इट हाउ डू न्यू लिबरल पॉलिसीज बेनिफिट द मेजोरिटी कम्युनिटी इट इज मेंट टू बेनिफिट सम कॉर्पोरेट्स और इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट सो आई थिंक यू शुड कम क्लियर ऑन दैट Hello, ma'am. Um, I have been a very uh, high admirer of you. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I've been a very high admirer of you, and perhaps I think some of the things you say will be barking up the wrong tree. And I've been following you some time, and uh, I have been say, <coughs> even people who have been thankless to you, you have been fighting for them. All the uh, things are, I mean, it's personally affecting me because. If you look at the last four decades of this country, all have been mired by one sort of communal right or the other. Apparently, it is had four or five of them. But uh, since I am from my minority community, I know that next target would be me. So my family, I I sleep at night, I get nightmares that someday a mob will uh, be at my gates and it will demand flesh. So in that sense, I. Uh, in that sense uh, i think the prevalent uh, this uh, i i don't think anybody who will paint please feel go the ahead this is called majoritarian bullying just go ahead go ahead please 
on, Daddy. Go ahead and speak for as long as you want. I will only be a, a, a standing in their process. But the only thing is that it, it pains me, that's all. Because I grew up in a missionary school, which I had a holistic job there. I admired Ramdari Singh, Gendimika, Sutan, and Pan. All this, Jay Shankar Dasad, who is apparently one of those ideologues which I later come to know. I had my my mother taught me in a school, and it apparently I was brought up by my Hindu aunties. So the only thing is that I would like to ask you why to call such a communism kind of law? Because then the whole the idea of you have a nation that is changing its whole psyche, its whole soul. So. How can you, I mean, if you look at Nazi Germany, okay, you could not prosecute the whole of Germany. If some of them decide to do that, it's definitely, I mean, it's, I don't think it's it worth it because nobody is willing to talk about it. I'm sorry, I took up the time. Please stand up and introduce yourself and then ask questions. We'll have three more questions, one here and then one there and then one there. So. Three questions in line. Only one person from that group will get to ask a question. Yeah. I am Santosh. Uh, any noble cause uh, would always find a resistance across any community or any country, anywhere. Uh, what I have found about, I mean, what I read about you or your work, uh, the, the Supreme Court of this country has set up a, uh, a, commu a committee, which is SIT, SIT report which has, the, the head of this SIT report has uh, accused you, I'm not accusing you, accused you as such, that uh, uh, you have uh, tampered with the witnesses, you, you, hang on, hang on, you have tampered with the witnesses, 22 witnesses submitted the exactly ah, identical. I'm sorry, no, one minute. Since you actually uh, uh, got misinformation, I'm going to interrupt you. There is no SIT report which has come out with this. Supreme is, no, one minute, one minute. Sure, sure. You don't have the freedom of the audience. I'm sorry, you cannot manipulate information. I'm not manipulating there any is, information. There are no. one or two people who have who are former employee of our organization who has made that allegation. The Supreme Court has stayed the inquiry and in fact said that this is malicious propaganda against the Easter Settlement. So no SIT has made this allegation. Please do not spread, spread this false propaganda. I, I, I'm sure no, no, please correct yourself first. If you want okay, to continue, Raghunath, correct yourself, I'm, I'm, otherwise I can also interrupt. Sir. I'm, I'm not, I am not going to sit and listen to an erroneous question. No, this is not a question. No, not it's erroneous. SIT no, has not, not come it to is this not. conclusion. In fact, SIT has not, not come to this conclusion. It is one or two individuals who filed a false There, there are reports in the Times of India as no, well as NDTV no, which has is, actually published this. You are actually spreading Mr. falsehood. Mr. Raghavan has given an interview to NDTV no, which full sorry, interview is available correct. on the YouTube. This which is you can not, also No, visit. this is not correct. And then you went on to claim that this is an interview. This is not this, correct. This report is by government of Gujarat which is not true. This is not correct. What you are saying is not correct. So I will interrupt you. One second, just. No, you, no, you are incorrect because you are in the business of spreading lies. Yeah, you are in the business of spreading Can lies. Can we move on, please? Can we move on, please? Uh, I'd like to. Uh, my name is Sonika. I'd like to make a comment on the nature of the interaction that, that's taking place. It's fascist. I'm very glad. I'm very glad that all of us are present here to see how closed off our political space for dialogue is today. No, not that they're going to kill us. No. And this is the reason, this is the reason why communalism in any form needs to be addressed. And I'd like to disagree with you when you say it's a noble cause. It's not a noble cause. We are all fighting for staying in a safe society. Let's have another question. We have a question from there. Um, I'd just like to remind you that we'd be taking priority for questions related to the talk today and not personal questions. So please try and address that. Uh, good evening, ma'am. I have a question like uh, for, uh, yeah, I'm Herschel from Biotech Department. I have a question like uh, you plan to build a mu museum for uh, Gulberg Society. What was the logic behind building a museum for a people affected by a riot? You could I'll have used in a better cause for the same money. No, I'll tell you. Now let me finish. I'll answer the question. I'll answer all the take, five questions together now. Shall we take one more here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, madam. My name is Samrut from Mechanical Department. So I have two questions. 
Uh, first is you already quoted when you are doing your lecture that uh, in couple of instances like let me Narendra Modi and couple of people who are quoted in the uh, Sikh riots were elected back. So in the most of the media and also all the NGOs and the society activists is always targeting mm -hmm. these people who are already selected. I feel when the people only selected there is something which is more wrong which we need to people have to target which we are not targeting. And other than that uh, like everywhere we are dis having the dis here in the discussion of communalism but I see even in the Indian Institute of Te Technology is like we think it should be one of the premier institute of the India still people are discussing more about the communal aspects for the elections like what are the coming up, uh, coming up general election rather than the uh, economic uh, economic vision of the leaders and all those things don't you think the communal discussion is somehow overtaking the the actual discussion which should have happened uh, among the people masses for example all these communal discussions uh, communal things may be affecting some assume some one crore people but all the policies will be affecting 100 crore people so don't you think at some places some places all the media and the society should change the mode of their uh, this change the model that they are trying to target i've got um, five or six questions yeah. so i'm going to deal with them the first one was about 1999 communism combat and I'm going to say that at that point, and we still believe that is a threat, that the BJP government was on the threshold of coming to power, and we believe that BJP is the parliamentary wing of the Rashtriya Swayam Seva. No, no, please let me believe. Listen, I'm sorry. of the Hindu supremacist ideology that killed Mahatma Gandhi. It is unable to even listen to a discourse. and the CPI all contributed and we believe it was an important ad campaign that brought up a consciousness about how poisonous the RSS is including Sardar Patel's letter when RSS was banned when Sardar Patel said even today the organizer publishes God says book and advertisements of God says book mean Nathuram Boltoi. Why does organizer publish ads of this book if they have disclaimed God say and the killer of Mahatma Gandhi? Organizer is the official magazine of the RSS. Even today, organizer publishes advertisements of God says book mean Nathuram Boltoi in Marathi. So the, the connection is very clear, and we felt it important. There is freedom of expression in this country. Even today, you have sponsored media. You have Pioneer which is run by a certain party. We have every right to propagate a certain thought process. And if we believe, if we believe that RSS is poisonous for this country, till this country remains a democracy and doesn't become a fascist authoritarian dictatorship, we will continue to do so. They can't bear the answers, yaar. They can't stomach answers. They don't have proper capacity to dialogue or debate. They just met Heman Karkare, who was killed on 26 November 2008. Vicious propaganda by RSS in Nagpur and Shiv Sena in Nagpur simply because he launched a probe into the Malegao blast against Hindu Sanatan Samsa. Heman Karkare, you all are shameless. Shameless ideology. <coughs> Hemant Karkare was reviled by you 
and RSS and the Shiv Sena because he launched a fair investigation into Hindu Sanatan Sanstha and RSS. <coughs> you all cannot have, and you don't have a capacity for truth bearing. Uh, can we please uh, just restart the call? Please. Gujarat, can we please Gujarat wait for the model, answers? Gujarat's model of development today, which is a model of aggressive neoliberal agenda, that's the answer on the neoliberal question, is a model of development that has promoted jobless growth. Statistics show it. If you are open minded enough, you can see it. The p position I was trying to, the, the uh, uh, comparison I was trying to make and suggest is, which has not been in enough explored theoretically is that around the same time India electorally moved to a Hindu majoritarian ag agenda from the mid-1980s onwards. That was also a time, 1989 onwards, where a cross-party consensus on an aggressive neoliberal agenda was accepted. Where a complete abdication of common resources, national resources to corporations, with abdicating parliament and the assembly. Please understand this. That you are trying to hollow out our system of governance, None of the major decisions, whether it is FDI, whether it is uh, handing out MOUs to major corporations, mines, etc., are debated in parliament or in our state assemblies. These decisions are taken by cabinets of both political parties, both national political parties, and even state level, whether it's Tamil Nadu or Orissa. There is not much difference in the kind of po economic, uh, political economy that is being practiced. And my contention is, that majoritarian Hindutva politics sits very com conveniently with a hegemonic economic agenda. Because you want an agenda which is majoritarian, which is not messing around with the diversity and pluralism of Indian democracy. So if you create a majoritarian threatening shield to it, where minorities, uh, Dalits, Adivasis are quietened down by this aggressive violence of the majority, then it helps the neoliberal agenda. That is the connection as I see it. And the unfortunate thing is that the third front, the left which we look towards for solutions, itself has not been able to come up with a viable solution or a viable alternative. And that's what some of us are looking for, that the left has not been able to come with an alternative. The, there was a dream and a plan when our case was lingering in the Supreme Court that we should have a memorial at Gulberg, which will look at not just the 2002 violence, but will look at sectarian violence in general, including the... Uh, what happened in 84, the, evic uh, the Nelly massacre, the evic eviction of the Kashmiri Pandits, etc. Because we believe that like racism in the West, communalism and caste violence is something that we tend to gloss over and forget because it makes us inconvenient. So a memorial that memorializes the right things, not simply blood and gore, but the resistance. In Sardarpura village, it was a Dalit Sarpanch who had his hand cut off because he saved the life of 23 Muslims. And we want to celebrate those resistances who resisted majoritarian hegemony. In every village in Gujarat, for the horror stories, there were people who saved lives. In Narora Patia, there was a doctor from the same community that was attacking. That doctor and lawyer risked their lives to protect Muslims when they were being attacked. So this story of resistance needs to be memorialized. Skills, uh, skill development centers were sought to be set up for those who have been displaced and who have been shamelessly not rehabilitated yet by the Gujarat government. The idea was a memorial of that kind. By the time, one minute, let me finish. One minute, let me finish. By 2009, 10, 11, you found we, our organization is investing a lot of human resources and material resources into legal aid for the victims in 68 cases. And since land prices, uh, prices are ex escalated, we told the society in November 2012 that this dream looks unlikely to come through because the plan was always to somehow raise funds at market value. Therefore, they passed a resolution telling individuals that you can sell your properties individually. No money was exchanged, no property was exchanged. Today, one or two persons are filing vile allegations against us saying that we've cheated them because we create, collected monies from our donors for this museum. Our don donations are collected for our legal aid work and our other work. It was not collected only for the museum. So therefore, th the case of cheating and the case of breach of trust is simply not made out. The High Court is now hearing the matter of quashing of the FIR. And just like Lokmanya Tillet and Gandhi said, we have to face sedition charges from the British government. That sometimes from a vicious government, you have to face vicious charges. We, as much as Malika Sadabai, Mukul Sinha, Rahul Sharma and R.B. Shrikumar, have been the victim of malicious, vicious cases by the Gujarat government. And we will contest them to the best of our ability.
Okay, we'll take another round of questions now. Please introduce yourself and ask the question. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, मैं रचित पटेल हूँ और युवा शक्ति फाउंडेशन चेन्नई का प्रेसिडेंट हूँ मैम आई ओके विद हिंदी मैम मेरा आपसे एक क्वेश्चन है कि आप चाहती है कि हिंदू मुस्लिम सब लोग शांति से रहे मेरा एक ये क्वेश्चन है आप चाहती है कि हिंदू मुस्लिम सब शांति से रहे हाँ भाई बढ़िया बाबा बढ़िया आगे बढ़िया हम चाहते हैं कि शांति से रहे हाँ तो दो के बाद गुजरात में एक भी कम्बल राइट नहीं हुआ अगर आप लोग बार बार उसी में बुझते हुए आग में घी डालेंगी तो ऑब्वियसली नेचुरल नहीं होगा दूसरा चीज क्वेश्चन मेरा यह है कि जिन विक्टिम्स को लेके आप फैज खान मैंने एक इंटरव्यू देखा फैज खान का उसको आप लोग वो विक्टिम था उसको और और भी जितने विक्टिम्स था तो उनको आप लेके बस में बैठाकर दिल्ली जाती थी और उनके नाम पर चादर बिझा के चंदा मांगती थी जब वही दंगा पीड़ित आपसे उस चंदे का हिसाब मांगते हैं तो वो बीजेपी से मिल गए ये कौन सा क्वेश्चन हुआ आपके ही सिटीजन फॉर जस्टिस एंड पीस में काम करने वाला रईस खान उसका भी मैंने इंटरव्यू देखा वो जब आपसे हिसाब मांगा कि आपको फॉरन से इतना फंडिंग हुआ तो पैसे का जब हिसाब मांगा था आपने उसके ऊपर भी यही इंजाम लगा कि उसको ऑफिस से निकाल दिया कि आर से मिल गया और उसके ऊपर जान से मारने की धमकी भी आ रही है कुछ दिन मैं अभी जवाब दूं जरा हाँ जी दीजिए अब बैठ जाइए शांति से बैठ जाइए सबसे पहला हम हिंदू मुस्लिम एकता बिल्कुल चाहते हैं और शांति भी चाहते हैं क्वेश्चन वाज अबाउट वेदर वी वांट कम्युनल हार्मनी बिटवीन कम्युनिटीज एंड अबाउट द अदर एलिगेशन प्लीज कैन यू ट्रांसलेट इस क्वेश्चन मेनी पीपल डोंट क्वेश्चन माई क्वेश्चन आंसर इट सेल्फ विल बी ट्रांसलेशन That he is talking about Hindu Muslim. Uh, whether we believe in Hindu Muslim unity, yes, we do. But we believe that there can only be lasting peace with justice. Uh, to the question about since 2002, there has been peace in Gujarat. Why are we going on and on about it? According to us, we are not going on and about. We are going about our constitutional legitimate duty of securing justice for the mass murders of people in Gujarat. That is our constitutional right. the people who are affected by it seem to be very threatened by this struggle and the reason why there has been no violence for the last 12 years is because the supreme court is watching because witnesses have been given cisf protection because the trials are being conducted under the acute watch of the supreme court and because to date we have managed to secure 117 life imprisonments for the victims of the gujarat carnage <laughs> unprecedented in the history that is why the people who have suffered this blow because of our collective action and i salute the courage of the survivors to stand by the struggle for justice i salute those women who stood up in the naroda patia case and spoke about the rapes that happened in naroda patia and i salute jyotsab and yagnik the judge who convicted uh, maya kodnani and babu bajrangi on the 29th of august 2012 please you can't wipe out the history from the 12 year struggle and because of these steady convictions which unfortunately 1984 did not have that is why there is peace in gujarat please go back to narendra modi speech of 9th of september 2002 it was dripping poison when he thought that the courts will not act he was dripping poison only after that did he keep his mouth shut he he, he has been silenced by the constitutional machinery of this country modi has been silenced not because he wanted to change but because the courts were watching please go to the same internet that you're talking about type becharji speech mechana till the zakia jafri case was filed in the uh, magistrate court all his supporters including some of you were listening to that speech and gloating over it but ever since the Becha, uh, uh, zakia jafri case the coward that he is he has removed that speech from the internet why has the becharji speech been removed from the internet because he's a coward at heart and i tell you one more thing i tell you one more thing that we are accountable to the laws of this country when we take donations we are not answerable to modi rice khan or anybody else we are answerable to the income tax to the charity commissioner and to the authorities and we have a fully audited trust and we are proud of our trust board does anybody ask a question of who's paying for the private helicopters of modi when he goes hopping to hopping who pays for him who pays for apco worldwide 
We are dealing with a fascist dictator who's being funded by shady corporates. Okay, we'll take the next question now. His personal expenses, we don't know who's funding. Good evening, ma'am. Let's see. You don't have the guts to ask a question of Modi. Who pays his helicopter bills? <laughs> Who pays his helicopter bills? Adani, Ambani, CB, FBI, <laughs> CIA. Who's paying? Good evening, ma'am. Crores of rupees he's spending. Crores of rupees. And they're not going into election expenses. What kind of accountability is this? Ah, good evening, ma'am. I am Vikram from Chemistry Department. As you told, you uh, you visited Sri Lanka because in in the Sri Lanka Tamils are in minority. Like that, you went Pakistan to see the in the there the Hindus are in minority. <coughs> if not, you should go and remove the something <coughs> there because you are. I think you should go since you no, came no, for no, the No, no, because Hindus you are doing that job. So you why don't go. you go? Narendra Modi and Togaria can accompany you. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, I'm Vishak from Social Sciences Department, and thank you for your wonderful lecture. Thank you, sir. And um, uh, <coughs> like, I have one question regarding the structure of the education institutions. Like, when I came to IIT, I was very surprised to see that T three or two temples are there inside the campus, or supposedly secular space. Uh, there are three temples, but the but the party politics is banned constitutionally. So, do you think we are, you know? Uh, uh, it's, it's too dangerous a trend to have three temples but banning the <coughs> politics inside the campus. So, do you think it's the state is perpetuate, perpetuating soft communalism through structuring the higher education institutions in a particular way and the intolerance we see in this audience, in the intolerance we see in this auditorium is nothing but the effect of all this soft communalist attitude by the state. The, uh, the, majority, the majoritarian trend in our institutional processes, the proto-fascist forces don't suddenly come to power. Proto-fascist first, forces first try to hollow out the institutions of state and they hollow out institutions of democracy and that is what has been happening in our country with the complete infiltration of our educational institutions, police, judiciary and other wings by these forces. And you're absolutely right. It's not just temples. You probably have the Shaka also happening. It's happening in the Bombay IIT where the Shaka holds its uh, meetings regularly, the RSL Shaka. So the issue is, so the issue is that this goes against the very grain of constitutional democracy. And I think this is the issue that we need to raise to reclaim, rebuild, and resuscitate uh, our democratic institutions, to deepen the democracy within our institutions. Your threatening posture is terrifying. Excuse me, ma'am. My dear friends, please. I think whichever view you take, all of us are civilized, right? So please, you will have your point of view. Everybody can state or question what they want. I think she is willingly sharing it. There, these are debates which, if you look at history, tell me which question of history has been answered completely to everybody's satisfaction. For heaven's sake. Allow a process of discussion and I think our friends are, are doing a desperate job and trying their best to control what's happening. And I, I am very sure even in the few minutes I have been here, they have been fair. They have not been unfair. Please, allow our own students to be fair in the discharge of what they want to do in the EML. It's not a question of who wins the argument, who loses the argument. There is a process of discussion. There is greater information. There are more doubts. I think that's a wonderful outcome of this kind of a discussion. Nobody can go to perfect answers out of this kind of a discussion. Please. Okay. Please allow the process to happen. Everybody will have their say. Okay. Thank you. And there was one point, one minute, there's one point which left out of my answer, that when you talk about, you know, going to Delhi and other places to talk about what happened in Gujarat 2002 by bus or otherwise, 
the question we need to ask ourselves that from the 1986 onwards the kind of politics of parading of bodies parading of bricks that has been taking place how did it begin i'm talking about the ram shilanya program the ram mandir program i'm talking about the godra bodies being brought the photographs of the godra victims being brought, the postmortems happening in the open so with the aggressor does the parading mobilizes creates a mass hysterical sentiment and then we ask the survivor and the victim how dare you carry on telling your story hello madam uh, myself devi prasad from civil department we are not saying that if someone is involved in the communalism you protect him you hang him as modi said no i don't believe in death penalty no ah, okay you don't believe but he he openly he openly admired he openly he openly said he always got life imprisonment in 117 okay. my have two questions before i know about the modi i came to know about you by your 2003 or kausar ban stories even my and my sister were reading the stories by that time i am the from the place where we and muslims were minority and majority live together we never know what exactly the communism means and what exactly the secularism means after your stories me and my sister have a tears in my eyes that was written in the religi- uh, regional paper from some you know, from karnataka and after some two years when it has been there was no kosher one at all your stories were were fake the same editor the same person the same paper has published the same story that time we think that is not the person who is being like involved in the communism this this kind of stories who will I think you're completely wrong. There's been well, no story that we published which is fake. Man, I'm man, sorry. Man, please don't I, spread canards of lies. You know. I, I mean, give to, me which story. Tell me the title of the story. To, 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 give me the title of the story. Two thousand nine. No, da, who Dhanaji said two thousand? Which story? Huh? Which story? I think. Uh, no, you it, can't think. If you're making such a serious allegation, tell me which story was it, false. Kausar Banu story. That's not true. Why? That, no, please, please listen to me. Kausar Banu story. Eyewitnesses to that story have testified in the court. SIT report says no, no, no. There's a judgment after the SIT report. The judgment says that it possibly happened. We don't know. Possibly. No, 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 no. But I'm sorry. There are Deccan Herald articles, Times of India articles who have testified to that story. So please don't attribute that story to me. No, no. Eyewitnesses have said that story. Do Atisha Settlement is not the beginning and the end of the storytelling of 2002. A- A- there were A- journalists A- covering it April justice justice verma former chief justice was covering please do not spread lies sir no we are not yeah, spreading the yeah, lies yeah, we are just yeah, asking questions for the clarification no now i'm giving you a clarification no, that's a kausar banu story i am not responsible Dhanajaya for that story Dhanajaya mahapatra 2009 april yeah, 14 yeah, has yeah. wrote a, against the sit and again the next day you confirmed it is the sit is not the sit report that's the report submitted by the defending liars but again on april 17 dhananjay mahapatra has written with the mention dhananjay mahapatra apologized the next day saying it was not an sit no, report he did not he did not apologize, he didn't apologize. He didn't no, apologize. No, if you no, don't remember know. that if you no, don't remember that it's your selective memory no it's not no it is your selective sorry. memory sorry it is your selective memory sorry it was one police officer who made that report sit has not stated that in its report Hello, ma'am. Uh, I'm uh, Abul. Uh, uh, my question is: uh, uh, Recently, the book was released, the fiction of fact finding, and uh, one of my friend wrote in Facebook that the author hits a few sharp nails onto Modi's hollow but hate bloated head, and I can't help but comment that no matter how vehemently, how many people, how many times hit the sharpest nails on that Modi's head, we still have people, quite notably students. from the very institutes which are fallaciously branded as the pride of india it's a shame saying i i i one second i have a friend who says i i would be blessed if i get my degree from the hands of modi that's why i said it's a shame yeah. what what can i excuse me please ah uh, okay yeah uh, uh, yeah uh, what can a person do in such depressing state of affairs keep except, fighting uh, except wonder that <laughs> keep fighting keep resisting that's the only thing that prevents us getting depressed and not giving to this bullying and except i wonder why is it so easy for fascists like modi and baltakre to uh, garner such obnoxious public support 
and why is it so comfortable for us as a society you know to be oblivious to the suffering of the oppressed and to just to just uh, i personally believe and i'm going to say something very provocative that those who actually idolize modi in the way you're saying it actually approve of what he did in 2002 uh, yeah uh, one question uh, they actually approve it and they actually condone it there is all this business about peace after that development is simply a veneer and therefore the whole prospect is frightening and needs to be battled so fiercely basically it reflects on each one of us where we stand at the political choices we make reflects on each one of us where we stand morally and ethically okay uh, we we'll, we'll field questions to the speaker you guys can settle discussions afterwards you won't take uh, questions to people we'll take questions to the speaker i also want to make a reference to one important document one important document that is forgotten about gujarat which needs hey. to be revisited one minute i just want to bring in something because of uh, your question here that the operation kalank of uh, ashish khetan which was such a brave exercise which was the self confessions of the accused and the uh, cbi has actually verified the voice tapes of all the accused in that so none of the accused have taken the position that that's not my voice on tape they've questioned the motive of ashish in doing it but they've not questioned that it's their voice what they see on that tape is simply frightening it's not just about the fact that modi is said to have come and garlanded the rapist at narodha patia that evening it's not simply the kind of prosecutors he appointed it's not simply the fact that he's supposed to have told people at godra that i will give you 72 hours to do what you did but the body of evidence that we have collected through these 12 years of investigation which is available in the public domain if after all of that whatever the legal process does if as individuals we are not able to take a stand i believe that it reflects on each of our own integrity ha ah, yeah, uh, somebody was asking there about uh, so maybe you can go and ask the temple samajam when the temples were established whether before iit or after iit was founded or you just uh, have to get educated simply before commenting okay <laughs> hey yeah, just i mean just simply do you cannot comment on the number of temples and when the without knowing when they were established iit was not before okay hello ma'am my name is chaitanya i am from mechanical engineering Uh, what we are doing right here is we are virtually creating a divide between us you know fighting between us and if we had not had this discussion i'm not telling you we, we don't have to fight but you are just going on pronouncing somebody as a dictator and i expect you okay you can give your views but it's just too far don't you think don't you think it's just too far and if somebody um, uh, somebody says that we go we love modi or we we are going to vote, vote for modi it's because we believe that no we can get some change and if it doesn't happen even if it turns out, turns out like a what hitler uh, in nazi germany or whatever we are going to fight him with the help of a constitution which we have the same way you're doing against the godra engines no no too no. much ma'am we can't just you know go ahead break the future taking the dictator people can change this is a this is a country we can change ourselves and if he comes out modi if he comes out with the same statement the fact that he removed the video shows that he you know he maybe does not endorse his right now or fears that because of the statement he won't win in the win in the election no he will go to jail okay 7 years 7 years 7 yes, years yes ma'am and that might be the case because right now the, okay ma'am uh, the thing is people can change and uh, you know i uh, <laughs> Uh, no i think that's a very nicely put question i'd like to answer i'd like to answer it's a very well put question very dignified way it was put just like you have a right to believe that he might have already changed or he has changed some of us have a right to believe that he has not do you accept that so i'm saying we will all therefore follow our own inclinations in that regard but just as you have a right to believe that he has changed and that was the motive behind removing of the video i have a right to say and tell people because of my experience that that's not the case and then as we know in a democracy the numbers will win okay that we know that to your answer but you know that uh, it's because we believe that people will change we believe in a reformative form of justice and not retributive
that we don't believe that if a godra happens there has to be five times more killings of the other community some some killings may have happened because that's the nature of communal violence but you wouldn't have had this scale you would not have had this scale of 2000 people being killed and that is what is so repulsive about that politics and no so i'm the only ending up by saying that just as you have a right to believe that he has not changed some of us believe that at heart he remains very authoritarian My name is Santosh. Uh, I think we should really appreciate the work you have done uh, protecting the human rights. Uh, we should focus the word human here, specifically. Uh, uh, and uh, I want to ask one question to you. I was there in Shaka. I have a lot of friend in all our other community. I believe in uh, secularism and neutral value. But in Shaka, they they never told me to uh, kill anybody, or they ne never told me to hate anybody. They just told me how to behave. and i have a right i have a right to choose the way i live and uh, i think uh, the kind of uh, talk you have given is little bit dividing if i go uh, go on the road tomorrow some people will talk at uh, look at me in the way if, if in the way they are uh, favorable or they are against so i think the the other party is also uh, equally uh should be accused and this party is also should be should is also responsible because we should be in our limit and we should uh, like we should uh, have a developmental uh, thinking that's it my question is how can you say that joining a shakha or joining an rss uh, i i hate extremist okay i hate extreme uh, philosophy but how can you say joining a shakha is divisive that's a good question i'd like to answer it a very good question my uh, i mean i respect the fact and i believe you every minute when you say that your experience of the shakha was not negative i see no reason to disbelieve you because i'm taking what you're saying as complete truth i please understand have the grace to listen yaar don't be uncivilized i take my understanding of the shakha from two persons who have actively written about it and i'd like to give you their names okay and i can share the books also that they've written one is dr goyal who has written a book rashtriya swayamsevak sang he spent the first 22 years of his life in the shakha okay and that book has run into three editions i'm happy to share a copy with you and the other one is pushottam agarwal both persons spent 22 26 years of their lives in a shakha and they have written about how the, they felt it was an intrinsically divisive ideology that's where i base my understanding on it's not a baseless understanding I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I've answered the question. Don't scream and shout. Don't scream and shout like that. Okay, we'll huh? take the next question over here. He is also one person. I'm talking about two other people. Don't scream and shout. Behave yourselves. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, my name is Lata. Yeah. I've been unfortunate to live through two riots. I was in Chandigarh when the 1984 riots were happening in Delhi, and I was in Ahmedabad when the 2002, 2002 Modi's were, Modi riots were happening. <laughs> and uh, and uh, during uh, i think apart from the riots and the people who are involved in it i think media has played the most important role during the 1984 riots the riots like you mentioned people were accused because people did see who was in the forefront yeah. and i remember reading about it much later because the papers in punjab and chandigarh were censored yes yes completely completely censored so that way the rest of punjab and chandigarh was much peaceful and quiet whereas during the gujarat riots it was the media which you know showed all the pictures and it has been helpful in a way reaching out to all the people telling what's happening in gujarat and telling them that you know there's one community which has been targeted but if the same media had been there in 1984 it would have been different but now they are asking for justice yeah. so my question to you is there have been many riots which happened during in many other states before that and its congress has been in power so is your organization involved in also helping the others mm. in seeking uh, justice see i'll give you the answer it's a very good question uh, we are also a very active in 9293 when the post babri masjid violence took place in bombay where uh, sections of both the community were affected and we had lots to do with the publication of the shri krishna commission report also and since then 
uh, whether it is a question of the Muzaffarnagar violence, where again you had uh, a different kind of scenario in September 2013, we have filed a petition in the Supreme Court, and also in the police firing related to Dhule, where the Congress party has been in power. So 1984, we are not directly involved, so we have been trying to give whatever assistance to H.S. Fulka in terms of publishing his articles and all in communalism combat. And in terms of, like I said, theoretically, if you look at the pages of uh, Sabrang and combat, we have looked at all the communal violence, even Marad. Nobody mentions Marad, but Marad was a very important incident in Kerala, where you had violence taking place and the report that came out. Malegaon, Malegaon in 2001, where you had a very brute violence and we relentlessly did a lot of work there. So it's not a question of targeting one party or one community. It's a, it's a question of an understanding that this kind of divisive hatred in politics is a serious threat to the Republican basis of our democracy, the, the equity and non-discrimination which is vital to our democratic setup. And the infiltration in our institutions of governance by persons of different ideologies who kind of affect egalitarian politics is what is very worrying. Because then you have policemen, teachers, textbooks not functioning in the way they should be functioning. And uh, unfortunately, many of us are quiet about this. Uh, we have a question here. Uh, I am Dinesh from Physics. Are you feel any threat through your protest against these communal violence, people fighting for the communal violence, against the communal violence? In, uh, I mean, I've had about five physical attacks on me when I've been in Gujarat. The last one being in 2013. The first one was in 2002. So there is an element of physical threat. And there's also constant verbal abuse, some of which we even witness in this room, which takes place all the time. And when there's a woman, a woman in question, it gets very, very distasteful often. Why? Why not? You don't understand the English language. Please relax. Uh, hello, ma'am. Myself, Kuber Nak from HS Department. So, I have, uh, I am talking about the thing that majority and the Hindu gym. So the Dalit community, they are belong to the Hindu gym, mean Hindu community. So how many of you remember about the Lakhmanpur Bathi massacre? It's Sorry. not important. Okay. How many of you remember the Lakhmanpur Bathi massacre, which is committed by the Ranbir Sena in Bihar, which is constituted by the Bhumihar Brahmin? So it's not the matter of communalism. It's also within the so it's within ourselves. I mean, in every community. It, it's not about the communalism that it's Muslim or Hindu. Even in the Hindu gym, there are the, there are the things that are happening which is really dreadful. So, how we are going to mean uh, that RSS or Ranavi Sena, you should ban those kind of things which are repeatedly committing the mistake, repeatedly com committing, and people are suffering a lot. And the recently that October 2013, uh, Bihar High Court verdicts, they are no, they are in the Lakhmanpur Bathe massacre. No one get punished. They are all free by the High Court. So what's going on here? That what about majority and this Hindu gym? It's a very important question because in two major incidents of caste violence, where the Ranveer Sena was involved, one case where 55 persons were killed and another case where 35 persons were killed, Sessions Court convicts them and High Court has acquitted them in the last six months in Bihar. And the Ranveer Sena is involved, which is a mobilize, uh, which is an organization of upper caste Brahmins. And it's a very shocking scenario. And uh, in fact, one aspect I did not touch upon, that you can't really understand communalism without understanding caste. That it's only when you understand the years of caste-driven violence in this country that you can understand what communal violence is today. Yeah. Okay, uh, she has to catch a flight by 8.45, so she has to leave by at least by 7. So we are winding up in 15 minutes. We'll have one question here, one question there. Then here, then here. Like so, for there there will be total of four questions. And anyone else interested in asking any more questions? Okay, so last question will be there. Five questions. You have already asked. We are going my all there there fine. So there will be five questions in total. Yeah, um, ma'am. Oh, I'm Akhil Bharadhan from Department of Humanities and Social Science. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm asking about a bit different uh, question. You talked about uh, uh, special marriage act 
and the uh, Hindu bias in it. Uh, I'm personally a person who actually believe that Special Marriage Act is a phenomenal legislation in this country. Uh, could you please elaborate on yeah. the issues yeah. uh, which is present in current Special Marriage Act and the solution that you think uh, can be brought down by amending this act? Mm. Or do we need a uh, different act altogether? No, no, no. Hello, I'm Pritam from HS Department. Um, uh, I, ha uh, I have a question. Before that, I have an um, observation. Uh, I think we are all here to uh, listen to a, um, a lecture on human rights with reference to combating communalism. But uh, it happened like uh, in the end, it all become a kind of a... Uh, in a, a kind of a no, it's like a verbal assault on the, on uh, or a kind of an attack on the particular uh, speaker who is speaking, uh, uh, rather than just like uh, focusing on the issue uh, on which we are actually discussing. I do not know, and uh, it, wh whether it is like uh, it is uh, legitimate or not. But yeah, now I am going to ask you the, my question. My question is like in Indian subcontinent or uh, if I just like look uh, beyond it, we, we would look two different kind of a phenomena in the past decade or so. One is like uh, we have a kind of a liberal democracy which is spreading uh, across uh, in maybe in Arab worlds or in uh, other parts of our uh, in Indian subcontinent, especially in Myanmar or uh, other parts. But with that, one kind of an, uh, phenomena that also coming up is that these societies are getting sharply divided between uh, kind of uh, uh, liberal views and hardline views. Huh. And uh, if we look at uh, these, uh, maybe uh, what is happening in Myanmar or what is happening in Bangladesh, huh, are we heading towards that kind of a situation? And how does, uh, and one thing, uh, I forgot to mention, everything is happening within this liberal democratic structure. Mm. So is there any kind of a loophole or weakness mm. is there? And how does, how human rights could be brought in mm. to combat this kind of a um, phenomena that is happening within this liberal democratic structure? We'll have a question here. मैडम बहुत धन्यवाद माहौल को गर्म करने के लिए सॉरी हाँ धन्यवाद तो बोलते हैं आई एम अखिल फ्रॉम भारतीय प्रौद्योगिक संस्थान मद्रास मैडम सबसे पहला क्वेश्चन ये है कि संप्रदायिकता है क्या मैडम सुन रहे क्या हाँ जी हाँ मैडम संप्रदायिकता है क्या आप सवाल खत्म कर लीजिए फिर मैं साथ में सबके जवाब दूंगी नहीं नहीं फिर हम भूल जाएंगे ना नहीं मैं एक एक करके नहीं देने वाली मैडम जस्ट वन क्वेश्चन मेरा एक ही क्वेश्चन है संप्रदायिकता है आपके क्या? पहले तीन और सवाल है तो मैं सबके साथ में दूंगी आप सवाल कर लीजिए पहला क्वेश्चन है संप्रदायिकता है क्या मैडम बस ठीक है तो आप बैठ जाइए दूसरे चाचा बैठे रहो चाचा बैठे रहो हाँ तो मैडम बात आई आपकी सब चीजों से सहमत है ठीक है आप आए सबको समझाया लेकिन आप जाते जाते हैं थोड़ा सा संप्रदायिकता फैलाते हुए जा रहे कारण उसका केवल एक है कारण केवल उसका एक है कि बहुत से लोगों को जो आहत हुआ वो आरएसएस के प्रति हुआ मोदी ओदी किसी से ब्लॉग नहीं करता मोदी के लिए हम सपोर्ट भी नहीं कर रहे ऐसा कुछ लेकिन आर या हिंदुत्व जो आप बोले बार बार की ये चोर है मतलब मैंने बोला हिंदुत्व को मैंने डिस्क्राइब किया वी डी सारवरकर के लफ्ज में आप मेरा लेक्चर सुनिए बारीकी से लिखा हुआ लेक्चर है मैडम आप गलत बोलेंगे तो मैं आपको इंटरप्ट करूंगी आर एस एस की बहुत खूबी है झूठ बोलना मैंने इंटरलेट करना जो आपस में कोई ऐसे लग रहा है जैसे आर एस एस आप भी हाँ हो सकता है हो सकता है तो मैडम बात यह केवल आप आप अगला सवाल पूछिए सत्तर से अस्सी तक छब्बीस जनवरी में परेड में क्या आरएसएस ने कभी योगदान नहीं दिया 
आपने आप कभी योगदा आप आगे सवाल कीजिए तकरीर बंद कर दीजिए तीसरा सवाल पूछिए तीसरा सवाल क्या आजादी की लड़ाई में आर एस एस ही लड़ा बिल्कुल नहीं क्या बिल्कुल नहीं था अब आजादी के लड़ाई में आर एस एस बिल्कुल नहीं था मैडम ब्रिटिश सरकार के साथ में था आपके मतलब का जवाब है वो तुरंत देंगे बाकी आप होल्ड कर देंगे बिल्कुल क्योंकि आप अगर झूठ बोलेंगे तो मुझे कहना ही पड़ेगा मैडम झूठ नहीं बोल रहा हमेशा तो आपका आपको गलत इतिहास पढ़ाया जा रहा है इसी में मुझे शाखा से कुछ दो रहा है बस गलत इतिहास पढ़ाया जाता है मैडम आप उम्र में हमसे ज्यादा है हमसे ज्यादा इतिहास देखा है हम तो सुन रहे हैं छब्बीस जनवरी में तो आप शामिल मत कीजिए आर एस एस अभी अगर मैडम टाइम आप आठ चालीस में आर एस एस ने तिरंगे झंडे को कभी इज्जत नहीं दी और आरएसएस ने आप सुनिए मेरी बात आरएसएस ने कभी ब्रिटिश के खिलाफ आवाज नहीं उठाया हिंदू महासभा और विक्रम सावरकर ने बिल्कुल उठाया मगर आरएसएस ने नहीं उठाया मैम आई एम फ्रॉम इलेक्ट्रिकल डिपार्टमेंट आई हैव टू क्वेश्चन Ma'am, one thing is even you agree that uh, Congress government had a role to play in 1984 riots. Don't. Uh, my first question is, don't you think it's morally wrong to accept Padma Shri award from the same Congress led government? That's one thing. And uh, uh, second one is, I read in news that uh, you were denied some anticipatory bail. I'm maybe again the reports were wrong. But uh, my question is, why did you apply for an anticipatory bail in the first place? हम देंगे पूरे जवाब देंगे यस मैडम गुड इवनिंग दिस इज आनंद कुमार त्रिपाठी फ्रॉम केमिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट लाइक इन योर एवरी टॉक यू टॉक अबाउट मेजोरिटी एंड माइनॉरिटी आई थिंक इट विल बी इट ओन बी लाइक Uh, good if you talk about majority and minority Sim in simple word you can say human being yeah. Yeah. so if you are, if you are using the word majority or minority it may go for hindu or it may go for muslim but as you as you are leader you are running a ngo for human well being and all so I, i think it will be good if you use human being other than rather than majority and minority this is my question this is kind of uh, it's a not question i i think you can use further if you if you want okay, we'll take one last question i'm sorry we are out of time but yeah Okay, I'd like to say uh, something about what's been raised uh, repeatedly here, uh, also the raised by the last person who asked that talking about communalism is spreading communalism, yes. right? Yes. I totally disagree, <laughs> and I will, I will, I, I have. I'd like to relate this. Me, I'd like to relate this to a question which I'd like to ask the speaker, which is. you have we have to pay attention to how historical memory functions if the idea is ki kuch ho gaya to bhul jao and move on to aaj tak hum angrezo ko kyu ro rahe kyu hum swatantra divas manate hain why do we celebrate independence day jo hame gulab karke gaye the wo to mar khap gaye kabke right so my question is in the spirit in the spirit of moving on I'd like the speaker to share with us what her view of the clean chit that's been given to Modi is. That's the last question, right? Yeah. I'd first like to deal with this question about uh, the the decision to take or not take a Padma Shri award was a personal one, and it was taken by our organisation. The dispensation in power at the time, which was uh, Manmohan Singh, please listen to me fully. Manmohan Singh and others were not the same people in power in 1984. That was the rationale. Whether you agree with it or not, that was the decision. You still have a right to criticize it. Secondly, anticipatory bail is a provision to protect yourself from arrest if you believe that a vicious FIR, not once but five times, have been filed 
to prevent you from going to Gujarat to stand by the survivors to file their cases. So if I have to continue to have mobility in Gujarat, I will take anticipatory bail, not just this time, but even the next time. And for your information, anticipatory bail from Bombay was refused, but transit bail was given. So uh, uh, you don't have to be worried on my score. Secondly, uh, secondly, what is communalism? Communalism is the manipulation of religion and religious symbols for political uh, mobilization and political ends. It is not... It is not anti-religion per se, but if you have an organization that calls itself cultural, but actually indulges in rank politics, and politics of things like appeasement and others, which itself makes something majority and minority. Kisine ka ki you don't say majority, minority, but then why is the word appeasement so popular with that organization? Because you want to create a mentality where you want the majority to be under a state of siege all the time. <coughs> that the majority is under siege, from a so-called ghost-like minority. So in the very construct of the word appeasement is the construct of the word majority-minority. So we have to be very careful. That we, we Certainly we should talk about all human beings, but some human beings are poorer than others. Some human beings are weaker than others. That is why it is recognized that women need certain special protection. That is why it's need, recognized that Dalits need special protection. It's a shame in our country that despite the 1989 Atrocities Act, there were no convictions under, under the Atrocities Act. Therefore, amendments have been sought and made. And therefore, there are certain aspects of our society that we need to confront, confront, which is the structure of the society, the divisions, the lack of parity. And I'd like to just quote Baba Sahib Ambedkar when he said that mere political independence is not enough unless we have social and economic independence. And the leadership of this country in that sense has represented a hegemony of the upper class and the upper classes. And that is why you see the upheaval that is going on. And therefore, we need to respect different sections for what they are. There was a question, very good question, I thought, which I, uh, on, on the whole challenge, two kind of majoritarian supremacist forces are posing to liberal democracies everywhere. And I think this is a question that I don't have an answer to. It's, we are struggling to find an answer to that. It was a very intelligent question. that. Whether what's happening in Bangladesh or what we are seeing happening in India, this is really within the struct political structure of a democracy. We are seeing the incursion of majoritarianism, of a threat to the concept of equality and non-discrimination that we believe is inherent to that democracy. Whereas when democracy becomes simply re reduced to winning and losing elections, who gets the most votes? And then you don't have a di demo democratic structures which have deepened a sense of democracy in terms of representation, in terms of voices being heard, in terms of equality and parity. You actually have hegemonic structures em emerging through liberal democracy. And it's really a challenge to which I don't have all the answers. I'm just reading a book at the moment which Justice P.B. Savant has written called The Grammar of Democracy. And we are trying to find answers to this. I don't think there is an answer as yet. But I would recommend you read the book where they're talking about how our existing democratic structures can be further democratized, what needs to be reformed, what needs to be thrown away, what needs to replace the structures that we have. On the Special Marriages Act, I was referring to an amendment that was made to the Special Marriages Act in the late 70s, which privileged the majority partner in the, under, the, under the marriage in the Act. It was not there originally in the Act, and therefore that amendment needs to be righted if that entire uh, act has to be made uh, on par. And finally, I'd like to say that I do believe that a section of this audience came here simply to target and vilify, not to listen to an intelligent discourse. This is the India we live in. This is the India we live in. It's a contentious India where the politics of communalism cannot be discussed without not just hair standing on end, but without blood flowing instead of words. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, please hang around for a couple of minutes. We'd just like to invite our dean to present a memento to our speaker. Uh, Professor Ellis, please.